that today is the beginning of my new life. I'm going to start, I guess, recording it. I don't care if anybody watches it or not. It's just, I've always felt like I was going to write a book, even as a teenager, um, about my life. And especially when I was in prison, I knew I would overcome anything that was ever thrown at me. And uh, when I first got to prison, I read a couple of these books where these men were, you know, transformed and became pastors and they inspired me. And I, I began writing those books in my head for my own life. In the last couple months, I've felt called to begin writing again. And I have lots of notebooks from the past and then from the past several months or past year as well. Uh, but I believe I'm called to write an audio book or a visual uh, book because that's how we learn these days, myself included. As much as I read, I watch way more videos. I listen to the videos while I work. I listen to audio books or just blogs and learn from people that way. And so I know that that's, that's how our generation is geared to be inspired and to learn. And so this is the beginning of my story. I'm now living my dream, even though I had to go through the darkest nights of hell to get here. I'll talk about that at some point, not right now. Um, but I'm finally at a point where I'm comfortable enough to just throw myself out there and not have to defend anything anymore. I, even up till recently, I have felt like uh, I was free and living my dream, but I, I really wasn't. I can analyze it. I can look at it, not analyze it, but just look at my actions, my words, and see I'm still defending my beliefs and trying to prove myself to some invisible person that I believe is just everyone from my childhood, right? My dad, because um, my dad raised me on his own. He was a single father and he did the best he could, but he wasn't a very loving man, even though he did love me. He never told me that. He never hugged me. He never kissed me. And I didn't have a mom. I had two stepmoms who didn't really like me, so I wasn't loved by them either. So I was this little kid who never really had love. And so he always felt he had to prove like he was worthy. And I'm still that person, or I'm not even going to say was, I still am that person. And this is the beginning of me breaking out of my shell or, or leaving my cocoon, finally. I currently am in Norcross, Georgia, which is a suburb of Atlanta. I am from Flint, Michigan, and I left Michigan just after the new year here in 2022. And... Um, right before I left, I stayed in a hotel or a motel, I guess, for three weeks uh, in my hometown. And I, I realized while there, I hadn't lived on my own since I was a traveling teenager. <laughs> I went to West Virginia at 17 years old with no money and no plan and didn't know anybody. I just took the bus as far as it would take me. And lots of miracles happened along the way, and I always had a place to stay while there. I was homeless in Michigan before that, and I was homeless in Michigan when I came back to Michigan uh, for a little spell before going to prison. But ever since then, I've always lived with someone and had things provided for me. I was married for five years, so I lived with my wife, and then we had two kids. And then, uh, I guess you could say my midlife crisis started. It really started before I met my wife, and that's... I met her at the beginning of my crisis and decided to uh, forego that and pursue the American dream. And I'm very glad that I did because I have the two most beautiful kids <laughs> in the world. And I love them so much. And I miss them. And that's what hurts about this. But I know that I'm doing the right thing now because I had to get right. Because I, I resumed my midlife crisis. Um when my wife was pregnant with our first kid. And then it was about three years of really tough times for us. Even though it was a lot of joy in there. I loved being with the kids and playing with them and loving on them and kissing them and telling them I loved them a million times a day. Because I didn't want them to have to deal with the crap that I did. But now here they are dealing with the crap that I did. <laughs> It all comes full circle. And so I focused a lot on becoming successful 
and proving to other people that I could be a successful person, that I wasn't some useless piece of shit, you know. I didn't even know who I was proving. I was trying to prove it to myself. I can tell that now. But then I still thought it was my dad and my mom and my childhood friends and their parents and whoever else. You know. So I left Michigan and I went to Louisville. I felt, I felt like that was the place to go. I wanted to go south and, and be near the mountains and I didn't want to be in cold weather anymore. So I stayed in Louisville for three weeks and then it snowed and stayed cold for like four days in a row. And I said, nope, not, I left Michigan because I didn't want this shit. <laughs> so I felt like coming to Atlanta. So that's what I did. And now I'm no longer going to just stay in hotels. I'm going to live out of my car. I'm going to live in campsites in my car. I'm going to stay in parks. I'm going to go wherever. Wherever I feel called to go, whatever I feel like doing. Not selfishly. I'm not interested in acquiring things or status anymore. I'm just interested in inspiring others and helping people along my way, bringing uh, light and joy and happiness and love to those wherever I end up and to you if you're watching this. So I guess we'll end it here because it's longer than I wanted it to be because I know our attention spans are pretty short. And this is kind of boring just sitting here talking, um, but I've been through a lot and so I can sympathize with a lot of you. And I know we all know there's something wrong with the way that we're living and the way that we're, we're told we're supposed to live. I guess I could tell you how I fund all of this too, because no one's providing for me, uh, but I sell books on Amazon. So I source books wherever I go. I clean them up, bag them up, ship them out and let Amazon do the rest for me. And so I came to this motel, cheapest one I could find for a week rate. Not because I didn't have the money, but because I don't want to waste money on myself anymore. I want to invest my resources, my income, my money, my time in others. And so I, I spend as little as I can on myself these days. I've gotten rid of all my possessions, especially my prized possessions. And I pretty much have what it takes to live and work now. I make enough to be able to travel wherever. I'm fortunate enough to have a good enough car to do that. And we'll see where this journey takes us. Thanks.